Clap. I have a, a really uh, great interest in the sort of role that artificial intelligence will take in our society uh, and whether it will be a sort of new class of slaves uh, because if you make something think uh, but then you use it as a sort of work uh, tool it's very similar to slavery so I always thought that was very very strange idea and my last film uh, Artificial Humors is very much about that and then I think in my films I, I represent technology in a few ways. Uh, one way is I just make fun of it, you know, like uh, there's a lot of cell phone jokes or computer jokes, objects today, you know, everybody has a sort of safety blanket of uh, iPhone with them or telephone, smartphone. And then there's another way which is a sort of dystopia, like uh, The Hunchback is about this psychedelic, psychotic future where uh, uh, technology uh, uh, takes over everything and where people are getting very tired and not being able to work very well because they're to spend some time in a pre-technological age and the irony is that they create that pre-technological world through a simulation so it's all artificial and then there's one more way which is just a very optimistic or uh, techno-utopia kind of perspective which I think the artificial humors is very much of that uh, in that film, the main character is the robot, and I think that it's probably the most lovable character of the film. So I think there's all different sorts of ways that, that my film looks at that. I think sometimes my films are read as a sort of incrimination of technology, that technology is bad and that we're missing some sort of humanity or a connection with the earth, but uh, I don't so much believe with, uh, that. I think there's also huge problems with uh, uh, fetishization of, of nature and and with archaic social modes like uh, Pasolini really loved uh, or believed that uh, we had lost a uh, free notion of sexuality. People have always censored themselves and, and they've also found ways to liberate themselves or to create subcultures that are a sort of uh, uh, freeing of those mores and, and, and norms. So I don't know, I think I'm just skeptical about any sort of fantastical uh, uh, utopia that people create and believe too, too innocently in. Uh, I'm very skeptical of technology but also very skeptical of an archaic fetish. All in all, if you uh, look at the statistics of uh, quality of life, which there's some metrics that economists use, to judge it, uh, supposedly the entire world, the poorest people and the richest people are living better than they were a thousand years ago. So I don't know where too much uh, it's going and in terms of the technological future, I'm really excited. I think it's, it's very uh, energizing and fantastical and almost surreal, the level of, 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 of power that technology has in our everyday life. I think technology has always been the, the center of how uh, culture and society has shaped itself and defined itself. Uh, in prehistorical times they only had small stone spears and so they were hunters and they invented the plow and they became an agriculture and the impact that this has on uh, gender roles, you know, uh, what women do, what men do, and also class structures. Uh, technology has always been at the center of that for like, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. Many people have access to uh, a lot of educational material that's online uh, what people call the democratization of culture through YouTube and, and Wikipedia and the internet uh, and the impact that we've seen like in uh, Arab Spring uh, where uh, in Egypt a bunch of Facebook groups managed to organize thousands of people to come and protest against the government that's an amazing result of technology but then you see what happened directly afterwards and a military dictator took over Egypt shortly after so it's positive but did it change anything I'm not quite sure um, so I don't know, I'm just skeptical. <laughs> well, I think I, s I started making movies because I was very interested in the role that uh, mass media had in, um, in politics mostly, like uh, how Hollywood often can be seen as a, a propaganda tool. Like today, uh, the, there's this film by Michael Bay, Transformers, and in that film, uh, a soldier tells the main character who's not a soldier, you're a soldier now. Uh, and Michael Bay, he, he has a direct telephone line to the Pentagon to be able to get 
all the F-18 jets and F-16 jets and tanks. So his film is really a propaganda for signing people up to join the army. And, and if you think of that many people going to see movies that defend uh, what the Pentagon's doing, I think that does have some effect. So I was very interested in, in the power that this mad me mass media had, usually negative, uh, to shape people's worldviews. Uh, and I wanted to play with that because for me, I started as a painter uh, and I felt like I was uh, very isolated from having any sort of social impact. Uh, but then ironically, I make films which are as, I think, restricted as my paintings were. They are very seen by, they're very, they're localized in a, in a peripheral circuit, definitely not a mass media circuit. For me, Queer is, or queering, is a way to sort of break or unfold a box, you know, uh, unfold stereotypes. And for me, that's the definition of queering, is where you flip something. You take something that meant something in one context and, and you twist it to become something else. And, and usually it has to do with, with uh, uh, liberation, with an opening up and opening up to more meanings and to more ambiguity. I mean, I'm interested uh, very abstractly in, in new visions. I think oftentimes, uh, yeah, it's, it's programs and festivals uh, that have these sorts of titles are for films like mine, which are films that are a bit outside of, of the boundaries of mainstream cinema uh, and that are doing this queering, uh, this unfolding of, of stereotypes and pushing the boundary somewhere. Whether this is actually all our fantasy uh, there's a great text by an uh, art historian and theorist, uh, Rosalind Krauss, which is called uh, uh, the, the, the Avant-Garde and Other Modernist Myths. So the idea that there are new visions or that there is an avant-garde, she considers to be a total invention of modern times and that actually doesn't exist, that uh, uh, the film I was referencing, uh, uh, Transformers, that can be seen as the most regressive kind of cinema, and the most conservative or commercial kind of cinema is also a new vision of sorts if we really look at it from a, a, a fair point of view. It's one of the strangest movies I've ever seen. And so for me, maybe I have a much more open reading of what new visions means. I think, I think uh, there's an incredible heterogeneity of, of visions that are coming from Hollywood, from auteur cinema, from uh, peripheral marginal cinema. So for me, I think, yeah, there's, there's, even Hollywood has a new vision, or Pixar, for example, uh, has a very radical vision, in my opinion, but I know this is a sort of questionable stance. Yeah, is it? Yeah. I guess director. <laughs> I guess, you guess. Show it like yeah, of course.